Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 and I'm back with a, uh, another video on the iPico, which is an iPhone uh, Pico projector. And last video I made, um, I modified it to take composite uh, video input. Um, it was only black and white though, oddly enough, and I'm still trying to figure out why exactly it is. But I've done some rewiring to make things more convenient, um, and I have it working perfectly. Uh, with the exception that it's still only black and white. And I have a feeling um, it's because its default configuration is S-Video, and I'm really only feeding into one of the pins, so I must be feeding Luminance, uh, which has the synchronization signal and the uh, brightness, essentially, uh, black or white monochrom monochromatic brightness. So I would need to solder another wire to Chrominance and um, feed it with an S-Video signal, because I don't think you can feed composite. I know you can go from S-Video to composite by putting an uh, extra cap in there, but I don't know if you can do the opposite. Uh, I don't have any S-Video devices to test right now, but uh, I will eventually test out that theory. Uh, I have the full data sheet for the main processor. The issue is, yeah, I know what registers to poke, uh, but I would need a programmer for the processor um, because from my understanding, the, the video driver and the processor are in a single chip. So it's not like I can just cut traces from the processor and just feed it with my own uh, uh, pick micro or something like that. So it's not as simple as I thought it would be. Um, it might still be possible to, to modify it, to hack it, but it's going to require more time and I do not have more time right now. Uh, so instead, you get this quick video. So here what I've done is I've uh, attached a wire. I'm going to open this up after I demo it and show you guys exactly where the wires go. So if you guys want to replicate this. Anyway, I soldered wires onto a external lithium battery. The one that this came with, this was a used device. Got for dirt cheap. Uh, for good reason too, because the battery was swelling. Um, yeah, lithium batteries, when they start aging and failing, uh, they tend to produce hydrogen gas. Um, when the hermetically sealed container starts leaking and that causes the cell to swell a little bit. Uh, so yeah, that's not a good thing. Anyway, threw that guy out, got this new, um, 1500, excuse me, milliamp hour battery. And so here I've also soldered a, um, mini plug connected to my, my, uh, iPod video so I can show black and white videos, but still videos nonetheless. So anyway... Everything still works. Um, let me just turn this on. Um, so yeah, let me point the camera at a wall instead and uh, show you guys an actual video of it working. So I'll be back in a sec. Okay, uh, we're back here. It's gone into screensaver mode. Uh, this is about uh, probably 15 inch image, something like that. Uh, don't have a lot of wall space here to show you guys anything blown up. Uh, so yeah, turn on my iPod, get this playing. So you can see everything works, it's completely in black and white. Uh, it sucks, but that's so far what I got. Uh, just a random electronics video showing here. Um, this would be actually really cool for some kind of retro steampunk uh, film projector showing, you know, silent films or something like that. Uh, not really into steampunk myself, but teach their own. Um, so yeah, this is one thing if you wanted to modify this. What I'm going to probably end up doing is uh, sticking my Raspberry Pi Zero um, because it's actually smaller than this. So I could probably fit it inside if I wanted to even just have monochromatic video and make this like a, uh, a terminal projector. So I, I can, I don't know, I could play old school games that are in black and white or old Game Boy games since they're monochromatic anyway. Something like that and make like a portable Game Boy projector sort of doohickey. I think that would be pretty cool. And Raspberry Pi Zeros only cost five bucks, so why the heck not? And so the other good thing is Raspberry Pis run off five volts. Uh, this projector, even though I'm running it from a lithium ion battery, will also happily run from five volts. Uh, so I could actually power them off the same uh, supply. So that would be perfect. Um, if you guys have any, any ideas of... I would still like to get the color working on this. Um, if you guys have experiences with uh, S-Video and Composite, and is my assumption correct? If you guys could point me in the right direction, maybe some web pages to help, uh, that would be awesome. Um, yes, yeah, so quickly, I'm going to pop this open, show you guys how the wiring is, 
And um, yeah, I'll post, I don't think I can host the, the PDF for the data sheet myself, but I can at least find a URL and uh, put it down below for you guys if you are interested. And uh, yeah, this is just a, oops, kind of blocking the screen there. Just a, an old video of um, a DIY vacuum tube if anyone's interested. This, this is up on YouTube, I'm pretty sure. So hopefully uh, it's okay me showing this. I didn't really know what I could show um, video-wise. But anyway, yeah, you can see it works perfectly. And I can turn it off, and we're all good. So I'll be back in a sec with this open. Okay, so I am back. Let me just get the camera situated. And uh, yeah, unplugged everything, disconnected, and let's get the metal shielding off. I'm going to try to flip this over without undoing the uh, ribbon cables because uh, those are kind of a pain to get out a little bit. Anyway, from the top side, um, I can poke around here with something metal. It should be fine. It's unplugged. From the top side, you can see I soldered um, this ribbon cable um, with a, here you go, just a 2-pin uh, 0.1 inch spacing header. Uh, to the battery contacts, I use uh, the outer contacts for positive and negative. So this is the original cable that it came with, the battery, the one that swelled up like a balloon. And you can see the, the way that it plugs in. The leftmost connector is the negative, and the rightmost is the positive. The middle one's for a temperature sensing for a safety feature of the battery. Anyway, so all you need is left, uh, positive, or negative, right, positive. And that'll get you for power. And this will run perfectly from 3.7 volts, and I've tested to 5. So it runs off USB just fine. Um, and the reason why I can do that is there's a built-in switch and regulator anyway, so... Um, and that's within the operational range. So anyway, we'll carefully flip this up. And I'll try not to drop everything. So here, here's the bottom of the projector itself. You can see there are two wires here for the composite video. I soldered uh, to this ground pad here. You can solder from any ground pad on this, this board for ground, but this was just the easiest to get to since it's just the bare pad on this unpopulated uh, footprint. So I just pulled ground from there. And then the second wire goes to a test point right in here. So you'll see that there's a row of like eight capacitors and then a larger capacitor right here. So let's see if I can maybe zoom in. Get a flashlight in here. Well, yeah, there we go. Okay, so yeah, you can see that wire... Uh, Wow, I wish I had more hands. <laughs> I sincerely wish I had more hands. So yeah, you can see here, right there where I'm pointing, uh, there's a test pad. That is where you can inject the composite video. Um, so as I said many, many times, this is black and white only for now. I'm trying to still figure out color video. Um, so yeah, those two points are all you need for composite video. Uh, this will be the tip, and then this will be the sleeve if, if you have just a standard RCA video connector. Um, so yeah, that is that. Um, yeah, I will post the links for the data sheet uh, once I find it. I downloaded the data sheet, but I forget where I downloaded it from. Uh, so if, if I forget, uh, the easiest way is to look up the part number on the chip, which is the uh, flashlight. Where'd you go? It's the Intersil uh, TW8835, and that's kind of the all-in-one processor and video chip, that big chip right in the center there. Uh, so, yeah, uh, easy enough to find. I, I found it on Google, so if I can find it, anyone can. Uh, so, yeah, that is that, and um, so hopefully I can, I can eventually get this working with full-color video. I, it's only composite, um, so it's kind of meh. This chip uh, does also support component and digital RGB. Um, so of the two component, I might be able to get working, but once again, you have to reconfigure the, uh, the image chip to actually tell it to accept. It, it, it doesn't automatically switch between the standards. Uh, I just got lucky that this is by default accepting composite slash S video. Um, but in order to switch to other modes, I'd have to essentially reprogram the processor inside that chip to write uh, different values to the configuration registers. 
So anyway, blabbered on for about 10 minutes and I have a cool black and white uh, Pico projector that I got for, I forget how much I got this for, maybe like 15, 20 bucks. Uh, so yeah, not bad at all. So definitely looking forward to integrating this with the Raspberry Pi, doing some really cool uh, portable computing sort of things going on, maybe a heads up display, I don't know. Anything's possible. So if you guys have any ideas though of what I could do with this, um, and you know how I can possibly get this working better. Uh, let me know down in the comments below and I will see you guys next time